Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be taking a look back at the RX 480 and asking how well it games in modern titles in 2019. The RX 480, along with Polaris, actually serve as well as a fascinating jumping off point with speculation for Navi, because AMD's strategy for Navi seems very similar for Polaris. Polaris launched back in 2016, in June actually, for the RX 480 and 470. And the flagship model that I'm holding in my hands here cost around 250 US dollars, although there was a cheaper four gigabyte version. This is the reference design and features eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory clocked to eight GBPS, 2304 stream processors clocked at 1266 megahertz. But critically, this GPU also uh, may, marked a drastic change in AMD's marketing. With Polaris, AMD's uh, strategy was to bring down the cost of the mainstream GPUs at the time and put out a card which was capable of 1080p slash 1440p at a price that it felt the majority of customers was willing to pay. Raja Kodori went on stage and made a rather amusing couple of references. The first of which is that this card bought down the price of virtual reality for PC gamers. Of course, that statement is half true. Even if you were to call this card $250, it was considerably cheaper than other GPUs at the time, which were capable of virtual reality, but also neglected to take into consideration the cost of virtual reality headsets at the time were the more expensive item. And quite frankly, therefore, we're still out of the reach of the average person who would have the budget to buy an RX 480. This card also put out roughly the same level of performance of NVIDIA's previous flagship, the GTX 980, although not the Thai, along with AMD's R9 390-390X. I say roughly because the performance between the cards did go backwards and forwards depending on the title. However, the RX 480 has actually aged slightly better on average than a lot of NVIDIA's hardware at the time, simply because it uh, has an architecture which is better suited towards DirectX 12 titles. So then, AMD's strategy in 2016 appears very similar to what the company are planning with Navi. There is a video that will be coming on the channel very soon exploring in much greater depth the strategy of Navi, but as a quick reminder, Navi 10 will launch this year. And given all of the rumours, both from what my sources have told me along with the wider internets, it would appear that AMD are targeting a price point which is going to be extremely competitive, but with a performance which is going to be roughly on par with the GTX 1080, possibly the RTX 2070. So very similar then to what they planned with uh, Polaris and the RX 480, where they had targeted the GTX 980, which is pretty much similar to saying the GTX 1080. So then, what uh, issues were there with this card? Well, there were a couple, and we'll get to performance in just a moment. The first issue is that the reference designs ran really, really hot. In fact, uh, while I'm holding a reference design in my hand right now because I wanted to cover it for the channel, I would have been much better served to opt for a uh, non-reference design card uh, because they had a significantly better cooler. So. Right now on eBay, you can get GPUs of the RX 480 and 470 for pretty good prices. And if you were to buy a used card, I would highly suggest that you do buy one which is not the reference design because these GPUs get very hot. And if you do increase the fan speed over like say 50 to 60%, well, your ears might start to bleed if you don't wear headphones. There was also a kind of a bug slash issue with the GPUs uh, when they first launched as well. And that is they were sucking up more power from the PCIe slot than what they should have. Basically, they were draining more power from the PCIe slot than what is the spec of PCIe 3.0, which could in theory brick motherboards. As far as I'm aware, 
uh, it either didn't or the numbers of motherboards that were affected were tiny. But AMD then released driver updates and uh, also BIOS updates on uh, subsequent cards, which fixed this issue. Since then, the RX 580 and 590 are essentially Polaris, just with higher clock speeds. And it's a bit of a shame that AMD didn't decide to simply bump up the number of compute units for various reasons. But of course, the company have then released Vega, which first launched back in 2017. And my Mark the company's entry into the higher uh, echelons of GPUs. But then let's discuss the actual performance of this card and how well does it stack up in 2019. So how well does the RX 480 fare in today's games? Well, if we take the reference design GPU, the answer is pretty darn well. We are going to be playing all of our titles with maximum quality settings and we're going to start things out with Shadow of the Tomb Raider which is very demanding and the RX 480 achieves 50 FPS with the built-in benchmark although this does go down to 35 FPS at 1440p. Still a higher frame rate than the current generation of consoles though. Rise of the Tomb Raider meanwhile hits almost 70 FPS at 1080p and switching to Batman Arkham Knight, we have 101 FPS with 1080p, 66 FPS for 1440p, Gears of War, a similarly impressive level of performance, 88 FPS or 60 FPS-ish. Resident Evil 2 plays extremely well with the RX 480 at 1080p, about 80 FPS average. But if we switch to 1440p, it goes to about 46 FPS with a two minute run. Wolfenstein the New Colossus at maximum quality is about 70 FPS at 1080p, but does struggle uh, further at 1440p. And Metro Exodus is incredibly demanding and honestly would suggest you turn down the quality settings a little bit, even at 1080p, because it really hammers uh, GPUs. So then, is it worth picking up an RX 480 in 2019? Well, the answer is actually yes, if you can get one at a good price. The good news is that uh, listings on eBay and Craigslist are pretty cheap right now for the simple reason that mining is all but dead. So because of this, you can pick up a card which is gently used or not so gently used at, in some cases, a really good price. I've actually seen some listings on eBay for around a hundred US dollars, which is, well, quite a steal if you're on an extreme budget right now and actually works really well if you just want a car to tide you over while, for example, you're waiting for Navi. So if that's the case, then one of these GPUs is an excellent uh, possibility. Generally speaking, buying a GPU on eBay is fairly safe, but obviously you want to check with the manufacturer's warranty uh, and see how uh, well they'll treat you if you have bought the card used. With that said, overall, the RX 480 to me was a very impressive GPU. It certainly wasn't perfect. It put out a lot of heat at the time. The clock speeds were a little lower than perhaps possibly we would have liked. It would have been amazing if the cards had launched at similar clock speeds to let's say the RX 580. It would have put Nvidia under an immense amount of pressure in the mid range because the company of course, eventually with Pascal did launch the GTX 1060. And you know, the GTX 1060 and RX 480, there was a fierce debate back in the day of which GPU was the better bang for buck. And either way, whether you go with the 1060 or the RX 580 or the 480, it's hard to argue that you're going to get a very nice gaming experience. Obviously, if you've got the cash, you would better be better off to buy a more powerful and more capable graphics card. But with that said, if your friend Bob is giving you an RX 480, you're going to get a pretty nice gaming experience. The other thing that these cards do rather well is team up with a free sync monitor. Now, one of the wise decisions that NVIDIA have made recently is finally supporting adaptive sync slash free sync slash whatever you want to call it. But of course, they're still branding it as a form of G-Sync. But it was an incredibly wise move for NVIDIA because what 
you basically could have done before is made the argument that you can get a much better gaming experience on the lower end to pair, let's say, an RX 580 or a 480 with a FreeSync monitor compared to even going with, let's say, a GTX 1060 or even an RTX 2060, but then a standard 60 FPS monitor if games which require Twitch-based reactions, let's say Counter-Strike, are your thing. With that said, FreeSync monitors now are really, really cheap. So purchasing a card such as the RX 480 and going for a FreeSync monitor is actually a pretty nice way to go. I'm still impressed with what you can get out of the RX 480. It's a shame that for gamers, the cryptocurrency mining craze really hammered the prices of the GPU when these cards were most relevant. But the similar thing, of course, happened to NVIDIA's lineup of cards as well. So it's certainly not a complaint you can squarely just put on the shoulders of AMD. But either way, these cards had one purpose, and that was to make 1080p slash entry level 1440p gaming viable for around the two to 250 US dollar mark. And I have to say that now they've flooded eBay at really good prices, they are still excellent GPUs. And one final thing before I leave you all, I have to also say that AMD's drivers over the past several months have improved considerably. And I don't just mean the fact that they've added in uh, Relive and they've done with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, if you have, you can like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.